how will this Indianapolis Colts tight end room fare against the rest of the NFL, especially when a guy that's been there for almost 10 years in Jack Doyle just recently retired? It's going to be the first time in a long time this room has not had a veteran presence like him. Now, Molly Cox, you could say he's a veteran presence, but he's still a bit raw. You know, he started playing the game late. You know, we know he's talented. We know he's very talented. He's big. He's got big hands. He makes those contested catches. But, you know, is he a Jack Doyle? You know, maybe he's going to be better. Maybe he's going to be worse. There's a lot of questions for this Indianapolis Colts tight end room. You look at the two new guys in Jelani Woods and Andrew, o and Andrew Oakletree. And then you have Kylan Granson, who is heading into his sophomore year. You know, the guy with the most experience is Molly Cox. You know, he's a great guy in the locker room, great character. You know, we just got to see how he is, you know, as a leader on the, on the field because this is the first year he's really going to take that role over. Doyle isn't there no more. Molly Cox is like the dad here, is like the parent. You know, he's gotta, he's gotta help these, ki he's gotta help these young kids out. Even though he's a bit raw himself, he's still smart. He knows a lot about the game. You know, so. You know, how does this tight end group fare against the rest of the NFL? What kind of impact are they gonna have? Is it gonna be minimal? Is it gonna be a big impact? I'm interested to see myself because this tight end room has a lot of potential. It also has a low floor. You know, outside of Marley Cox, there isn't anyone proven. And even Marley Cox isn't all that proven. You know, you look at the two new guys, as I mentioned, Jelani Woods and Andrew Ogletree. Both guys are going to be coming in, going to have to learn the ropes, going to learn the offense, have that typical rookie offseason where it's very busy, and then go into the training camp, be very busy in training camp, learn the playbook. We're going to see how they respond to that, learning a new playbook, see how fast they learn it, and just see how they respond to being in a new locker room, to being in a new team, to being at the highest level that you can possibly be at in football. And then you have the sophomore guy. Kylan Granson is a very confident young tight end. You know, he's not that big of a tight end either. He's more of a speedy tight end. At six foot two, it's not really tight end size. He's got some speed though. He's got some route running. He's smart. He knows where his soft spots are in zones. There's a lot about this kid to like, but is he really a true inline tight end for his size? I don't think so. I think he's a tight end that you more so want to use as a weapon. More as a like um Naeem Hines. Now I'm not saying he can't well. Well, by Naheem Hines, I mean like just more so as maybe being an unex, you know, maybe in some wildcats, and you can put this kid in the slot. He's fast enough to do so. He's got good enough route running. He's smart enough. You know, it's it's gonna be interesting how he fares against the rest of the NFL. Like I said, he's fast, but he is small for an inline tight end. He's not really the typical size here, you know. But we've seen a lot of people, a lot of kids, a lot of tight ends beat the odds so i'm rooting for the kid I'm rooting for all these kids all these dudes all have great character all work very hard and you gotta respect it that's what this whole team is that's what chris Bauer put together and then you know you go back to jelani woods and andrew ogletree jelani woods is a fast tight end as well for how big he is he is fast he's fast now his catching ability is a little bit raw. It could definitely be worked on. But his route running is good. Speed is good. Hands, even though they're a bit raw, they're still very good. This kid is very good. This kid, the the sky is the limit. When you go and you talk about tight ends that have the ceiling of maybe a Darren Wall or maybe, you know, yeah, they're big time names. You know, Mark Andrews, Travis, Kittle. Maybe he doesn't pan out to be one of those guys. Maybe he doesn't pan out to be that, that great. But it's there. It's there for this kid. You know, he's very good. He's got all the traits that you want in your typical modern day tight end. He can run block too. He can do it all. He can do it all. Is this the next Dallas Clark but better? I guess we'll see with a guy like Matt Ryan, you know, it's going to be a lot easier for these young guys to learn and settle in. Compared to a guy like Carson Wentz, you know, yeah, he's a veteran, but 
he doesn't carry himself like a veteran. He doesn't carry himself like a QB1. He just doesn't have that oof to him that you want from your quarterback. He doesn't have that fire. He does have fire, but sometimes it rubs people the wrong way, and he just doesn't come off the right way. And when times get rough, true colors come out. And we've seen where Carson Wentz, you know, the biggest moments in the biggest games in the most crucial stretch of the season the last two games you couldn't beat a Raiders team you know that's fair Raiders are a solid team they were a solid team going in that game but the Jaguars really the Jaguars yeah Matt Ryan's gonna let that happen he's not gonna lose the last week to a Jaguars team that gets the number one pick two two years in a row and then the Jaguars keeps him out of the playoffs. Matt Ryan's not going to let that kind of stuff happen. See what's got fire. If he sees one of these guys doing something that he doesn't like, if he sees that one of these guys could be doing something better, he's not going to hesitate to yell. He's not going to hesitate to to yell at them, to get them going, to get them fired up, to make them want to get better, be tough on them. Carson Wentz wasn't that. He's like, I'll get it next time. No. Matt Ryan is more constructive, much better teacher, much better veteran quarterback, carries himself like a QB1. And these guys like Jelani Woods and Andrew Ogletree, even though they're raw in their ways, as Kylan Granson still is too, when you have a guy like Matt Ryan that knows the ropes, you know, you know that has all the experience he has, the young guys feel it. The young guys benefit so much from it. So much. You know, so I hope that these kids figure it out. I'm happy they have a quarterback like Matt Ryan and not Carson Wentz. I'm happy that they have a guy that carries himself as QB1. That's possibly going to be here two to three years, not just a one and done like the past six years. We have so many starting quarterbacks. What, Scott Polzine, we had... Um, which was week one of the Andrew Luck season, had the shoulder injury, thought he was going to be back mid-year, never came back. So Jacoby started the rest of the year after week one. Tolzien throws two pick sixes to the Rams. Yeah, tough. Um, then you have Phillip Rivers. You have Carson Wentz. And, you know, you went to Andrew Luck back to Jacoby Brissett when Luck came back. A year, you know, start one and five, all that to Jacoby Brissett having to take over two weeks after Andrew Luck retires before the 2019 2020 NFL season, something like that. I believe it's 2020 was Philip Rivers' year, I believe. So 2019, Jacoby Brissett, two weeks before the season, has to take over and, you know, really. You know, it was tough for him, too, because the expectations for this Colt team were, the were, were, you know, Super Bowl. They were Super Bowl contenders with Andrew Luck coming back, coming back that year. And when you have a guy like Andrew Luck that contains himself the way he does, smart, has that fire of QB1, even though you didn't see him much, he did yell at guys. He did construct them. He carried himself as a QB1. And we have that again in Matt Ryan. When we had it with Phillip Rivers, you see how much more technically sound this team was? When you have a veteran like that, the team is technically sound. They don't do this. They don't mess up the simple things as we did last year over and over and over again. Quarterback is the most important position on an NFL team. If you don't have the quarterback right, you have to have everything else damn near perfect. And if you don't, you're not going anywhere. You're not making a pass the wild card. You need to have a game changer back there, under center, calling the plays, making the throws that you need to win games. So, I thank you guys for tuning in to the JDW Sports Talk Show, where every fan is welcome. Let me know what you guys think about this tight end room. I know I went on a rant on quarterbacks there, but it was a needed rant. Molly Cox, Granson, Woods, Oletry. What do you think of these four? Can Cox carry himself like Jack Doyle did in the locker room and on the field? Can Kylan Granson maybe be that next weapon, that next, you know, 
tight end that can just surprise people with his height is he can prove people wrong. Is Jelani Woods going to really put that height in his frame and his smarts all together in one season with Matt Ryan under quarterback? Is Jelani Woods going to break out year one? I think he's going to get a lot of playing time, and he's going to earn it early. And then Andrew Ogletree, you know, kind of more of a raw dude. You know, he's more raw than these other guys from a small school in Youngstown, but it's not a bad thing. When you're from a small school, you're hungry. I'm not saying that these bigger guys, in, you know, in these bigger schools aren't hungry. They are just as hungry. But these guys in smaller schools usually have a little extra flame to them because they've been doubted. They've been, you know, told that they're not going to do it all, them lives, all their lives. So they got a flame. They got a spark. Their soul is deep in their soul. They're, they're ready to go, to go and get it. They're going to work hard. They have the character. They appreciate the moment but are never satisfied. We'll see about, about Andrew Ogletree. He's not going to get much playing time in first year. I don't see it. But right away, he's going to be a very good run blocker and pass blocker. So, Moali Cox goes down. We have a decent run and pass blocker. So, I thank you guys for tuning in to the JDW Sports Talk Show. If you enjoy this if you enjoyed this episode, make sure you like, subscribe, and put the post on vacation bell on so any future videos. This is JDW.